I use a really long okay. exposure okay. and then I'll use my flash to just pop a little bit of light into the, the wall across enough so that you can actually see the bricks and see the nichos because okay. otherwise you know right. all you'll have is just the, just, the moon just, beam yeah, just but if you wash it out too much then yeah. you know you yeah, got, you got a, nothing it's done it before in terms of knowing how long to flash and yeah okay. yeah it's it's pretty subtle <laughs> I imagine. It's got to be pretty subtle. Specifically, this would be the last full moon uh, before the winter solstice. And the last full moon before the winter solstice for uh, folks that follow this major lunar standstill cycle will be the most northerly moonrise which is very very close to a full moon and so now we had full moon last night and so tonight is one night after a full moon it's almost too close to a full moon we might have some trouble with some sunlight interfering with the moonlight but we'll see how that goes um, we get this opportunity in October November December of every year but on the 18.6 year cycle, there's certain uh, groupings of those October, November, Decembers that we're interested in. The most northerly occurred around 2006. And so here at 2009, we're three years out of that peak. Um, we've got 4.6 uh, years, which is one quarter of the 18.6 cycle, more or less. Um, until the moon coincides with the sun at summer solstice. So this is like a moon summer solstice, and so we call it a standstill. So this is a lunar standstill, and it's the furthest north it gets, like the sun is the furthest south. I mean, I'm sorry, the sun is the furthest north it gets at summer solstice. And when this happens, uh, the moon will rise on this horizon over here to the northeast. It'll come into this ancient building uh, built about 1070 AD by the Chacoan people here in Chaco Canyon. It'll shine through a, a opening, which is alternately described as a window or a door, but it is an opening to the sky, which the, the moon uh, beams will shine through and will strike a, a series of niches that lie on the western wall. And the interplay of the cycle, the 18.6 year cycle, with the niches on the wall and the window uh, suggests that these people understood this cycle and encoded it in the architecture. And that being the case, this would be a very sophisticated understanding to be able to uh, incorporate into architecture. Now, how, how long have you been doing this kind of work? And, uh, and you have uh, other literature? You have a book out on this uh, yes, uh, project? Yes. I published in two uh, professional journals, one on this particular site and another on a site in Colorado called Chimney Rock. Um, and I've also written a small book that explains this lunar cycle in Western science terms as well as terms that these people probably understood it in. Uh, that book is called Moon Tracks. It's available at my website, uh, www.moonspiral.com, all one word. You can go on there and read about the cycle and also uh, read about the book and, and get ordering information as well as other information is, is on that site. Um, I've been studying this particular cycle here since about 2004. 
uh, when I was in doing some research on the general uh, lunar situation at Chaco Canyon and I came to Rinconada not really expecting to find the lunar cycle but after drawing maps and, and charting and taking measurements the cycle started to emerge into the building and uh, it's been very exciting and we also come out here in in the spring in uh, April and May, which corresponds to six months from this cycle, and the moon will rise at its close to full moon, will rise in its extreme southern position. So we have uh, two times a year that we can come, and as you can tell by the um, outfits I'm wearing, that this is not the summer. <laughs> April and May's time, this is uh, December 2nd. Uh, I'm sorry, no, it is December 2nd. And uh, we're out here, and we've been out here in November and December now every year for about four years, I think. The photography is very tricky because what we're trying to do is catch not the moon itself, but the moon shadow or, or the beams of the moon or the sun reflecting off the moon and that light reflecting through this window onto a wall. And uh, although I, I have a semi good camera it basically takes a very good photographer and a very good camera to be able to do this and that's one reason why uh, video will not make it and uh, if if we get lucky we'll be able to superimpose some stills into this video and you can have a look and see what the moon shadow does <laughs> Thank you.